So we're going to go out of Luke chapter 22. Luke chapter 22, verses 21 through 27. We're going to read it out of the New Living Translation. And it says, but here at this table, sitting among us as a friend is the man who will betray me. For it has been determined that the Son of Man must die. But what sorrow awaits the one who betrays him? The disciples began to ask each other which of them would ever do so, such a thing. Then they began to argue among themselves about who would be the greatest among them. Jesus told them, in this world, the kings and great men lord it over their people, yet they are called friends of the people. But among you, it will be different. Those who are the greatest among you should take the lowest rank, and the leader should be like a servant. Who is more important, the one who sits at the table or the one who serves? The one who sits at the table, of course, but not here, for I am among you as one who serves. And so Jesus was talking to his disciples, and to just, just bring this into context, they were th sitting down getting ready to eat, and Jesus was talking to them about being a servant. And he was also getting ready to prepare for his own death. He was preparing them, he was trying to get them ready, and so he began to serve them. And as he began to serve them, he started giving them instructions. And as he was giving them instructions, they kept missing the point because they were so focused on themselves. I'm going to read it out of the, the Message Bible, um, Luke 22, 24 through 30. As Jesus was telling them about what was about to happen, verse uh, 24 says, within minutes they were bickering over who of, the, who of them would end up the greatest. But Jesus intervened. Kings like to throw their weight around and people in authority like to give themselves fancy titles. It's not going to be that way with you. Let the senior among you become the junior. Let the leader act, act the part of a servant. Who would you rather be, the one who eats the dinner or the one who serves the dinner? You'd rather eat and be served, right? But I've taken my place among you as the one who serves, and, you st and you've stuck with me through the thick and thin, now I confer on you the royal authority my father conferred on me so you can eat and drink at, at my table in my kingdom and be strengthened as one, as you take up responsibility among the congregation of God's people. So Jesus was trying to teach them that it's not about sitting at the table. It's more about the one who prepares and the one who serves. And Jesus was telling them that, hey, I'm about to go away and as he was preparing them for his departure, they began bickering and arguing over who was going to be next in line. Don't that sound like us today? We're always jockeying for position. We're always jockeying for a title. We're always jockeying to be the one whose names are on the headline. But Jesus said, it shouldn't be so amongst us. And I was thinking about that, and I was, and I was thinking, you know, it's especially in today's time, especially here in America, where there are so many of us that are so entitled. And to be honest with you, and I'm going to pick on some of you, because um, I've been out to dinner with some of you. Um, I'm, I'm going to look this way, so nobody think I'm talking directly to them. But I'm going to talk to the camera. That's what I'm going to do. Cameraman, you ready? Got you. But we'll sit at the table and we'll expect our waiters and waitresses to do everything we ask of them, and as soon as it's not done the right way, we begin complaining, and what's the first thing you say? I hate going to eat with picky people like that. It drives me nuts because I see those people doing the best they know how. Now, don't get me wrong. There are some that just hate their job and hate that they're there. But there are some that are trying their absolute best. And I always give people a heads up. I'm like, look, before you complain, let me get my food, and then you can complain all you want because I don't want nothing in my food that doesn't belong in my food. 
because I know the people are doing the best they know how. And we always determine, we base what we're going to do, what we're going to tip off of how they serve. Isn't that what we're doing with Jesus right now? You didn't come through for me, Jesus. So I'm not going to church today. I'm not going to praise you today. I'm not going to give you glory today because you didn't do what I asked you to do. And that's how we are today. It's a give and take. It's, 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 it's what have you done for me lately? If you don't do what I asked you to do for me, then I'm not going to do what you are requiring of me. And that's what the disciples were sitting here doing just now. They, they don't realize the king of kings is serving them. He's prepared a meal for them. The meal was already prepared. The meal was already ready. They got their drinks on time. They got their food on time. Everything was set. And he set, set them up and told them, he said, hey, I'm about to leave you. I'm about to go away. And they begin to question themselves because he told them, he said, one of y'all are going to betray me. One of y'all sitting here, you, you, you're acting like a friend, but you're going to betray me. And they begin to question amongst themselves. And it went from saying, okay, is it me? Is it me? Is it me? Is it me? And the thing that we got to understand is if all of them had to ask that question, some of them had, all, pretty much all of them had some ill will motives. And as they begin to ask that question, it changed from asking the question, is it me, to I'm going to be the next in line. I'm going to be the greatest. I'm going to be the one who's going to take Jesus' place when he leaves the earth. And Jesus said, if you wish to be great, you must first become a servant. He didn't tell them that they couldn't be great. He didn't tell them not to strive to be great. And see, that's the, I think that's where we've messed up as believers. We think that we have to become so humble that we don't strive to be great. Because if, you, if you're trying to be great, you're arrogant, or you're cocky, or you're prideful. No, it has nothing to do with being prideful, arrogant, or cocky. It has everything to do with you being the best that God created you to be. And he created us all to be great. Because there's something that each and every one of us has to offer to many. And if we all would do our parts, man, this world would be a better place. Hallelujah. So we, we, we got the introduction from Mr. Steve Harvey how, on how he introduced Jesus Christ. And we got an understanding that we're not the greatest. That Jesus Christ is the greatest. The Bible says that, 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 that greater is he who lives up in us than he who lives in the world. So the thing is that we can take, take, heart, um, we can take courage in and knowing is that Jesus Christ lives on the inside of us. So we do have the greatest living on the inside of us. And so that already automatically qualifies us to be great. And so with, with, with all of these great people we read in the Bible, you can talk about Abraham, you can talk about uh, Moses, you can talk about David, you can talk about Peter, you can talk about all of these people in the Bible. And they did great things. But none of them compared to Jesus Christ. Because he is the beginning. He is the, the, the beginning of everything, and he is the one who created everything. Because he is the word. Matthew 11, verse 11. And it reads, Assuredly I say to you, among those born of women, there has not risen one greater than John the Baptist. But he who is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. And that, that, that just seemed like harsh words because John the Baptist got to do something better than Steve Harvey ever could have done John the Baptist got to literally introduce Jesus Christ on the scene. He got to be the one to tell everybody there is one greater than myself coming whose shoes I'm not even worthy to tie. 
He said, there's one coming that I'm not even worthy to be compared to him. He said, there's one coming that I know has the, the, the Holy Spirit and fire in his bosom. He said, all I can do is just dunk you under some water. That's all I can do. But the one that's coming behind me is much more greater because he's bringing not only the, the Holy Spirit, he's bringing fire. And as he was preparing the way for Jesus Christ, Jesus came on the scene. And Jesus came to John and said, I, I need you to baptize me. And John, of course, was like, no, I'm not worthy. John knew enough that, hey, this is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. I'm not worthy to baptize you. I need you to baptize me. But Jesus gave us our first example in the beginning of his ministry. He humbled himself. He knew who he was. He knew what he was putting the earth to do. And he could have used that to, 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 to gratify himself and to bring some, some vain glory to himself, but he knew what his mission and purpose in life was all about. And so he said, no, you have to do this so that the scriptures can be fulfilled, so that I can show my people that although I am the man, I can humble myself enough to become less than. And that's where I think we get it so twisted because as soon as somebody boosts our ego, now we think that we're untouchable. We think, we're, we, th we think that we're invincible. We think that, 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 that everybody is beneath us. Because you got a little money in the bank or you got, you got so many degrees or you got this big job and you, you got this big company or whatever the case may be. Whatever level you're on. We're all looking and we're all trying to compare ourselves and match ourselves up to the next person. And we don't understand that all we're here to do is serve. Jesus was the greatest example of a servant. Everyone understood that whatever he commanded, whatever he required, whatever he said, it would happen. And so Jesus was always careful at what he said and what he did. So he, 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 he had to show the disciples, he said, look, I'm serving you right now. So watch my example. He told John, no, I got I to gotta do this. So watch my example. So in Matthew chapter 12, verse 41 through 42, it says, the men of Nineveh will rise up in the judgment with this generation and condemn it because they repented at the, the preaching of Jonah and indeed a greater than Jonah is here. The queen of the south will rise up in the judgment with, with this generation and condemn it for she came from the ends of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon and indeed a greater than Solomon is here. And so everyone knew and understood that Jesus was the greatest. Those that, 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 that had a relationship with God anyway a true relationship, not a religion, a relationship. They understood that there's someone coming greater. John 13, 15, verse 17. For I have given you an example that you should do as I have done to you. Verily I say unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord, neither he that is sent greater than he that sent him. If you knew these things, happy are you if you do them. Christ is also the head of the church, which is the body. He is the beginning, supreme over all who rise from the dead. So he is first in everything. For God in all his fullness was pleased to live in Christ. And through him, God reconciled everything to himself. He made peace with everything in heaven and on earth by means of Christ's blood on the cross. I'm taking my time on purpose today. And I'm trying to take it as slow as I can because we have to grasp really who Jesus is. Because if we don't grasp who he is, we'll never understand who we are. If we don't truly understand what his mission in life was, 
We'll never know what our mission in life is. And Jesus just kept showing us every step of the way. He was giving us step by step. And it didn't make him great because of the things he did. Jesus wasn't made great because of, of, of the miracles he'd done and, 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 you know, the walking on water, the turning water into water. He, that didn't make him great. He was already great when he was created. Before he was in his mother's womb, he was great. And there are things that we can gr grab a hold of with, with Jesus uh, as Jesus has, uh, set the example for us. Number one, he's our example on how to love, give, serve sacrificially. He did all of that. He loved us all so much that he died for us. He gave his only life. He gave his life for us. For all of our sins, he paid the cost. He paid the debt. He paid for that with his own life. So he said, I would rather sacrifice myself than to see a whole lot of people going to a dying hell. I'm willing to give of myself. He was humble. He was humble enough to allow others to, to, to do what it was that they thought he should be doing for them. And the, and, and the fifth thing is, he was obedient. He always made sure he told them that I only do what my father tells me to do. I only say what my father tells me to say. He, was, he didn't have his own agenda. He didn't have his own motives. He was doing exactly what God told him to do, exactly what God put him in the earth to do. But we have to, do, we have to deal with something in our own hearts and in our own um, purpose of getting rid of self. Selfish motives, selfish ambition. The disciples showed who they were. They're following Jesus, they're seeing everything that Jesus is doing, but yet they were still thinking about themselves. They were still jockeying for position. When if they only knew that what God had put in them, what God had already placed on the inside of them, only they could do it. And that's what we got to understand, that everybody in this room, there's something that God placed on the inside of you that only you can do. And no one can do it better than you. No one can, can, can make it happen the way that you can make it happen. It, it, it's, it's effortless for you to do it, and people are like scratching their heads like, how did you do that? Because it was in you the whole time. But we'll look at somebody else and we'll want to do what they're doing when that's not even for us to do. We'll compare ourselves and we'll mix and match and we're like, I do that better than them. Well, they do that better than me. But no, it doesn't matter. We're all here to serve a purpose. We all have something that's unique about us. And guess what that uniqueness is? It's a piece of God. God placed a piece of himself in each and every one of us. And we all can't do everything that God does. But we can do the thing that he put in us to do. We can't go out and we can't save the whole entire world. But we can go and change our community. We can go change our house. We can go change, change, change the situation on our job. Because God put it in us to do. So if we get the mindset of that I'm coming to be a servant and to serve those who God placed in my path, man, how much greater would this world be? We got we to gotta know our position. We have to know our place. And Jesus said, I come to serve. And he said, follow my example. So as you see me serve, that's what you ought to do also. Uh, 
I told y'all last week, I kind of gave y'all a precursor about this. I, I said, you know, there, there's a debate going on right now at who's the greatest in basketball. Is it LeBron James? Is it Michael Jordan? <coughs> that, that, that's, that's, been the, that's been the argument for the last few years. And I'm going to tell you something that's so funny. If you pay attention, when Kobe was playing, Kobe was in the conversation, right? They were saying Kobe is better than LeBron. But now that Kobe's retired, now Kobe's out of the picture. So that's what you got to know about yourself. That after so long, you're going to be an afterthought. But Jesus is never an afterthought. He's the greatest. He's never an afterthought. He's been talked about since the beginning of time. You don't, hear, you don't hear nothing about Kobe no more, right? You won't hear about LeBron after so long. You won't hear about Michael Jordan after so long because it'll be an afterthought. Because they're going to be somebody that supersedes what they, they've done. Now, it might take it to 2050 or 2070, <laughs> but it's, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. So we can always want to pat, our, pat ourselves on the back and, and beat our chest and say, I'm the greatest of all times in what I do. But no, we should be the best servant that we can be. Serve with everything in us. Give with everything in us. Love with everything in us. I know I'm not going to get that many amens, but hey, it's all good. I want y'all to think on these things. The life of Jesus Christ in today's message is just, it's just to get us to understand that if we realize who he is, then everything else will be obsolete. It won't, it won't matter because he's our target. He's our aim. He's our focus. And if we're focused on him, we'll see that we're not anything great in the eyes of, of flesh. We're, we're, we're nothing because we're, we're, all, we're all prone to make mistakes. We're all prone to do something stupid from time to time. Am I right? Or am I the only one to do something stupid? I make some bonehead decisions sometimes because I'm putting my trust in me. I make, some, I make some crazy decisions. I'm just so thankful to God that my wife is still with me. I, I'm, I'm serious. Because I do some, some stuff sometimes that I'm like, dang, why did I just do that? But she's still there right alongside me. I thank God for grace. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So in verse 21 through 24, it says, But here at this table, sitting among us as a friend, is the man who will betray me. For it has been determined that the Son of Man must die. But what sorrow awaits the one who betrays him? The disciples begin to ask each other, which of them would ever do such a thing? Then they begin to argue among themselves about who would be the greatest among them. Jesus just told them he was going to die, and they start arguing. It was just to prove a point that they wasn't ready. They wasn't ready. If you, where you are right now, you see your boss, you see your, your, your supervisor, you see your pastor, you see um, your, your spouse, you, you start telling yourself and you start even telling others that you can do it better than them and you're just waiting to try to take their place, you've already missed the point. You've already missed it because it's not about you doing it better than somebody else. It's about you being the best servant that you could be. And when you're the best servant that you can be, it's going to always help and bless others. 
Always. You'll never, you'll never miss out if you do what is best for others. And as the water flows through the water holes, y'all know the rest. The water holes get wet as well. And that's all we should be, is a conduit to bless others. Because that's who Jesus was. That's who Jesus is. So who's the greatest? Who's the greatest? Y'all with me? <laughs> Jesus is the greatest. He's the greatest of all time. I know Muhammad Ali said, I'm a bad man. He said, I shook up the world. He might have shook the world, but Jesus turned the world upside down. And it's time for some people in this room to turn the world upside down. It's time for you to turn some situations upside down because the greater that, that, is, that is in us is greater than the world. And so if we know that he's in us, why don't we start acting like what, what he's called us to be? Why don't we go out to be great? Why don't we go out to do what he's called us to do? Why don't we just quit sitting in these pews, coming to church on Sundays, but Monday through Saturday, living any kind of way? It's time for the church to wake up. It's too much going on. It's too much happening. And we get more caught up in the foolishness than us being great. Because you know that in your own home, if something breaks down and something happens, you're immediately going to try to get it fixed, right? Well, that's what we're supposed to do out in the world. We're supposed to be ambassadors of Christ. And when there's something broken, we're supposed to have the answers because he's in us. We carry the, the answer. So instead of jogging for a position, go search God and seek God for the answer. Go search it out. Go, 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 go get before the Father. That's what Jesus did. Y'all thought Jesus just got up and just said, okay, I'm just fixing to go change the world. No, Jesus always went away to pray. Jesus always went away to get instructions. Jesus always went away to get the answers from the Father. And he said, me being Jesus Christ, I'm still no greater than the one who sent me. And when, he, when the disciples came to him and, 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 they, and, and the people came to him, they called him good master. He said, why call me good? Because he said, in my flesh, I'm not good. There's only one good, and that's the Father who's in heaven. But how many times do you say, or you hear somebody else say, I'm going to say you hear somebody else say, so you won't talk about yourself. I always talk about myself, but, you know, you might not do that. But you hear people say, I'm a good person. I want to say, no, you're not. <laughs> like, stop lying. Because I'm not. I know I'm not. I had, I had a cousin, we were kind of talking back and forth on Facebook, and she's like, people suck. I said, and I'm the chiefest of them. I'm like, I'm terrible. In my flesh, I know that I am no good. In my flesh, I know that I am bound to make a mistake. In my flesh, I know that I'm bound to, I, I, I'm bound to, to do something that, to, to offend you. I know that. I know myself. Those that are around me and, and talk to me not a lot, y'all know I talk a lot. I talk a whole lot. I know I do. But listen to this. But if you don't want to tr hear the truth, don't talk to me. Don't talk to me if you don't want to hear the truth. It's just who I am. Amen. Hallelujah. Can I get um, Minister Javon and Minister, uh, Pastor Tyler, Minister Eric, and, yeah, no, never mind, never mind. Pastor Tyler and, and, and um, Minister Javon. Oh, yeah, that's right. Can y'all come up here real quick? Y'all going to represent the 12 disciples. 
Yeah. So they sat down, and you see the table is already ready. You just got to use your imagination. They got steaks and lobster and scrimps and all of that on the table. It's already prepared for them. It's laid out for them. And as they're sitting there, Jesus has already done all the work. Everything is set. And all they got to do is just partake of it. And Jesus said, he blessed, they said that, that he blessed the bread, he broke it, and he passed it around to the disciples. And he told them to take a drink from this cup. And he, he, he just took them through the communion of, 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 of his death that was about to take place. And as they're sitting there, Jesus tells them that he's about to die, and they begin to bicker and argue amongst themselves about who's going to be next in line. Don't that happen in today's time when folks know their parents are going to die and they're fixing to get a big inheritance? They start trying to pick things apart. I, I, I mean, um, if I get in trouble, I told you, I'll just tell the truth. If I get in trouble, I'll just get in trouble for this one. But my grandma was sick about three years ago, and she was literally on her deathbed. And some folks started getting selfish, started trying to take stuff out of the house. They, the house was signed over to some people, but some other folks were like, that shouldn't be theirs, that should be mine, and it should be ours. And then one of them accidentally called me, trying to call my daddy, because I'm a junior, so they called me instead of my dad. And they got to talking about it, and I'm like, what are you talking about? And they were like, well, they shouldn't get the house. We should get the house, blah, 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 blah. I was like, can I just say one thing? I wish y'all quit trying to kill my grandma off because she's still alive. I wish y'all quit trying to fight over something that's, that's just stuff because she's still here. And my grandma's still here to this day. But people fight over stupid things, and they jock for stuff and positions for no reason. It's just stuff. You can't take it with you. You can't do nothing with it when you're gone. So it's best you understand that while you're here, do something productive with your life. Do something that's going to make a difference. Do something that's going to last. And if it's not Christ-centered, it won't last. Yeah, girl. Yeah, no, nah, don't shush her. Shoot, she in the message. If a baby understands, if a baby can say that's right, hey, I'm preaching good. I don't care what y'all say. That was one of my prayers. Real talk, that was one of my prayers. I said, God, help me to speak to people so much that a baby understands it. I don't want to be all eloquent and all up lofty and deep and people scratching their heads don't know what I'm saying. I want it to be where a baby understands me. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm not trying to be somebody special. I just want to do what God has called me to do in the earth. I want to be myself who he created me to be. And if you would just be yourself, you will see how you can impact so many people's lives. By being yourself. And I'm not talking about the prideful fleshly self. Now, this is just me. I'm going to cuss you out. That, that's just me. It's how I am. Take it or leave it. But if you are your true authentic self who God created you to be, and if people don't like that, so be it. The scribes and Pharisees didn't like Jesus, but it wasn't because he was Jesus. It was because they was jockeying for a position. They thought they were better than him because he didn't come from what they come from. They thought you had to fit a mold in, in, in an image, and, and, and they thought that you had to be of high prestige to be the, the, the scribes and the Pharisees. 
You had to be a Bible scholar. You had to go to theological seminary school and all of these things. But Jesus just came and blew their mind because he was the word. So Jesus is the greatest. Say it with me. Jesus is the greatest. So as they're sitting there, and they're partaking of the supper, and Jesus is giving them instructions. Jesus talks to them. He tells them, I'm about to go away. He set forth the criteria. Because after they done got full, and they done got sleepy, because they ate this good, great meal that Jesus prepared, they didn't have to do nothing, just sit down and eat. They didn't leave no tip or nothing. Jesus said, now let me take it a step further. Minister Javon, can you come, sir? It says Jesus st stripped his garment off and he grabbed a towel. need an apron, but towel will do. Oh, there we go. See, boy, you, you just ask and you shall receive. And Jesus put on his LHCIO apron. And Jesus humbled himself. He got the shoes off and the Batman socks. <laughs> and Jesus began washing the disciples' feet. And I know, I know you're saying it. I ain't washing nobody's feet. I ain't messing with nobody's feet. I ain't touching nobody's feet. Well, if you can't do what Jesus requires of you, then you can't be in his kingdom. If we understand this, if we get ourselves together, Restoration Church, if we do what God has called us to do, we understand that Jesus is the greatest and he lives on the inside of us, we can go do some great things. Stop, stop worrying about pastor doing it all. Stop worrying about Pastor Samuel doing it all. Stop worrying about this person, that person, and things are not this way and things are not that way. Go serve. Go be great. Go do great things. Because when you do great things, everybody can celebrate and everybody can come in and rejoice because we can see the goodness of Jesus Christ throughout this region, throughout this land, throughout this world, because we decided and made a decision to go make a difference. So those of you who wish to be great, you must become a servant. Jesus served with everything in him to the point of death. And he said, it is finished. I've done my job. I've, I've, I've taught you everything I know. I've given you all the instructions that you need. Now go be great. And watch this. The greatest of all time said, you shall do greater works than even he did. He's the greatest. He's not worried about his stats. He's not worried about his numbers. They say numbers don't lie. Well, Jesus just told you, you should do greater than I do. But he's the greatest, and he will always be the greatest. And no one, no one will ever dethrone him from being the greatest. So go be great. So in order to be great, the first thing you must do, number one, commit to the process. Bind yourself to see it through no matter what. 
no matter how hard it gets, no matter what people say, no matter what it looks like, no matter how many times you fail at doing what you've been called to do. Some of you need to get back up right now and get back in the fight because you knew that's what you were supposed to do, but you gave up because the process was just too hard. It was too tough. It was too great. But embrace the process. All it's doing is just building your spiritual faith. All it's doing is building your spiritual muscles. So keep working at it. Number two, humble yourself. Let go of your right and sense of entitlement. Don't be so easily offended. Let me say that again, because I heard one little soft hand clap. Don't be so easily offended. Stop being so sensitive. You wasn't sensitive in the world. When somebody came at you, you cussed them out real good. But you come into church and you get soft. Y'all got to understand the trick of the enemy. God didn't make you the way he made you to come be soft. He just wants you to be humble, not soft. There is a difference. Number three, serve first. Be the first one to sign up. Be the first one to be a part of the, 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 the missions that we're doing out in the, in the public. Get in the game. Stop being bench warmers and get in the game. Because everybody's needed. And there's numbers out there and statistics out there that say 20% of the people do a, a, a whatever. What is it? 80% of the work. Yeah, that's, I was right. I just didn't think I was right, you know. But this, that's, that's, shouldn't be in the church. Just like Jesus said that the person that's sitting at the table is the most important in the world, he said that shouldn't be with you. The servant is the most important. And I've always thought the servant, even when, before I knew it was in the Bible, I always thought the servant was the most important person because they have control over my food. And I'm going to honor that servant because I want my food right. And even if they prepared it wrong, I'm, well, sometimes I don't even, I was like, I'm just going to eat it because I don't want to take, take it back. But in other times, I'm like, well, yeah, this is not how I wanted it. But I'm trying to be as nice and, oh, I understand, it's okay, but no, I didn't, I didn't want it this way or whatever. But them ones, you know, uh, this is so bad, oh, that, these services, these waiters, I, uh, uh, uh. I can't stand it. Because they're the most important people. And then you have the nerve to throw out how much money they make. You're only making eight seventy-five. And does, who are you? He said, if you want to be the greatest, you got to become the least of these. And the servant is, is the greatest thing you could ever be. So number three, serve. Serve first. Jesus didn't come to be served. He came to serve. So stand to your feet. And we're going to worship for just a moment. And I'm going to call up my ministers. And if you're, you're here, you just, we just want to make this altar a place of worship and a, and a time to repent a time to get yourself together and know that we have to be in our rightful place to serve.